would you describe your sound? Oh, wow. Um, you know, epic and cinematic is usually the first two words that pop up. Um, you know, when you when you think about the power of an orchestra and how in movies and everything else, they can convey, um, you know, the mood. They can inspire you. They can make you cry or whatever. It's just very, you know, it evokes emotion. And then when you take about, when you think about rock music, obviously they can get you going and fired up and ready to go. And, and so when you merge those two, you know, you've got a powerful epic sound um, that can, that should move a, a, an audience in some way. How did Sinners and Saints come? Talk about the inspiration behind it. Oh, wow. You know, the whole concept of the album, the project as a whole, really comes from the fact that, um, come from the fact that I wanted to outdo the previous album. I wanted to have more sizzle. You know, I wanted to create more traction. So just little things came into play. Like I wanted to record at Abbey Road. I wanted to use bigger, better, more well-named musicians, better talent. I wanted to write more mature music. And then at the same time, the evolution of how I played, in other words, no longer with just a full orchestra, let's break that down into more of a Trans-Siberian feel. Um, okay, so what do we call that? And then there's the obvious centers and saints between orchestral players and the guy with the long hair and the ripped jeans. So it just kind of came together. And uh, what else is a symphony with people working together, creating something special, so symphony and centers and saints. Long-winded, but that's the answer. <laughs> How did you come to work with the Royal Philharmonic or or Orchestra on this? You know, uh, that's a good question. Um, I knew I wanted a, a reputable, a very reputable uh, orchestra. And, um, you know, I talked with Abbey Road, gave them the demos, and we shopped it to two of them. And they liked what they heard. I sent them some scores to let them know I wasn't some bedroom musician creating a little something. And uh, they liked what they heard and said, let's, let's collaborate and let's see what we can do together. I think... <laughs> It's insane that as of May 1st, you know, Billboard had you on number four rock digital song sales. You were also number 15 on the hot, hard rock songs. How did that make you feel? Oh, it was awesome. Uh, not as good as the number one on May. <laughs> I mean, that's because that's the first thing I look for. Am I going to be number one somewhere? And I'm like, gosh, number one. Then, okay, number four, number 15. So three charts in one day uh, can give you affirmation of, okay, I, I was doing something right. Well, Conflicted hit number one. So I think um, you're starting there and then you're just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> Two number ones. Uh, we got a third single coming out. Let's see if okay. we can hit trifecta. How hands are how hands on are you when it comes to the production side of your music? Oh, very much so because it starts right there at the very beginning of making sure that um, all the notes are heard and you're doing your calls and responses. You're doing all that stuff, and and you spend a lot of time writing it to make it work. So it's your job from start to finish to okay, did everyone play their parts? You know, and then okay, now that we have the tracks, you know, is every track being heard? Um, you know, and then ultimately, is that the sound I started with, with the demo? And nine times out of 10, if everyone's done their part right, it sounds bigger and better than, so I'm not a dictator on it, but I'm very, I'm very involved. And usually I have the trust of those around me that believe, yep, that worked, that worked. Did you give the Royal Philharmonic then orchestra some direction when it came to what you'd like to see for this particular song or the album itself? Or did you just say, here's kind of a little bit of flourish I'd like to add, show me what you've got? Sure. No, I, I, it was more, okay, you, you, know, you send them the scores, you send them the demos, uh, the, then myself and the conductor work with each other and we do go over the dynamics we do go over things like you know you see this run i really want to make sure that it comes out let me know if we need to record that separately uh and we'll bring it more into the mix you know so we cover that we cover overdubs um and i work with a brilliant um conductor his name is uh cliff masterson and so he could kind of tell where i was going he's done enough movie scores enough big epic things that uh, he knew exactly what I was going for, but yes, we were gonna have to communicate it, you know, through the orchestra, all the subtleties. Without the subtleties, it, it doesn't have the same vibe. Right. So then 
what songs on this particular album challenged you the most when it came to that production side? Oh, wow. Um, several of them were challenges because you're going for that big sonic sound and um, you can you can do a lot of things, tricks or whatever with your, your synthesizers and keyboards and samples to get that there, but can you do it really with a, an orchestra? Um, you know, I think, you know, I mean, I don't even know where to start. One of my challenges was the, we did a, I did a gospel, I, I took gospel uh, singers and put it with an orchestra. And I really wanted to make sure I got that Southern gas gospel sound while at the same time, getting that big orchestral feel. Oh yeah, now let's add some rock drums in there to give it some triumphant. So that may have been the most difficult one, but it, it paid off. Is there one then that holds a special place in your heart? Something that really stands out that's beloved to you? Yeah, I mean, they're all our babies. Uh, yeah, so right. Some are our babies because I'm like, I always wanted to get this sound. For example, Sinners and Saints. I mean, I wanted that big, big, massive sound. Um, and then it's the others are great because you know of some of the vibes I get from them that I was shooting for. But the most important song, as far as meaningful heart, is a song called Hello Again. It's kind of one off from the rest of the album, but it's predicated on um, I, I was adopted and my sister and I were separated. Um, and so when we were separated, we spent years and years and years looking for each other. And then when we did find each other thinking, oh, she's in another state, he's in another state. Um, we've heard each other had passed away, we, you name it. And turns out for 15 years, we've lived within a mile of each other. And so wow. awesome, you know, it's awesome stuff. So I felt like it warranted a song um, and not just to write one, it really had to come from the heart and this one did it out. And so Hello Again is probably the most heart, heart felt song that I have personally. What was your sister's reaction to it then? Oh, she loves it. She's proud of her brother. Of course. Uh, of course, you know, she's going to be featured at this 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 next concert when we debut the song. So she's out looking for the nicest dress and ready for the red carpet event. With the pandemic going on, what did you miss most then about being on stage? Just, you know, it's unfortunate because the last album, I started to get some street cred. I started to do performances. We were starting to line up the performances and I'm like, okay, this is really taking off. And um, unfortunately, right before it was really clicking, uh, COVID hit. You know, we had to cancel Carnegie, got the Carnegie Hall, you know, uh, the Dallas Civic Center, the different performing arts centers, one by one, you know, there's no performance. Um, so that was hard, but it gave me time to focus on the album, and I really feel like the album is better off for it. Will you be doing any live streaming or maybe Instagram lives to help promote the album? Yeah, so we'll do this one. Uh, you know, um, one thing we are going to do is video this one so we can air it, uh, and we'll probably, I'm 99.9% .9 sure we're going to broadcast the show live as well. Um, oh, good. I want to make sure it's getting out to the, to the right place, the right audience, because you can do one where 100 people or five people or 500 people, you know, I, we're just trying to make sure we have the right form, if not more than one form, to capture everybody. Is there, is there someone who's like a dream collab you'd love to really work with in the future on a song? Wow. Well, you know, that was... Um, that, you know, having Joe on the album was pretty much... You know, you know, if I had my way, one challenge I've failed at several times is to redo a song, one of my favorite songs I've ever learned uh, from a band called Motley Crue called Home Sweet Home. And if I could ever come up with a credible orchestral part for that. I, I have friends who know Nikki and Tommy and, and, and I would really try to get Tommy in on this project. I would love, that would be my dream. Let's bring in my heroes to play my favorite song with a credible orchestral version. I don't want some Muzak sounding, you know, chintzy version. It's gotta be that big, epic sound uh, that every other song gets. What about Guns N' Roses' November Rain? Oh man, and, you know, they've got the one performance with the orchestra that just is off the charts. Um, just like, I think, what is it? 
Metallica did their their project with the San Francisco Philharmonic. Um, so yes, that is an amazing song, and I've got some others, you know, right there with that. And uh, who knows, maybe maybe I should do a big ballad cover um, in, of an entire album. I mean, my gosh, some of the Beatles stuff, Paul McCartney. I don't think I should touch any of those. There's, you know, the whole. No, I'm not going to do those songs any justice. Make a bucket list then and see, uh, start ticking them off on a, and, and see if it's a little mental note maybe for later to do that cover song album. Absolutely. And actually I have, a, I have, a, I have a few. Um, so if that would, the one I probably would never touch is Stairway to Heaven. Let's, let's let that be. Uh, but there's some others. There's some others. You're a part of social media. Why is that such an important way for you to connect with your fans? Um, on a personal note, I'm not a big fan of social media. Uh, I just don't think it's the form where we get bulletproof behind a keyboard. Um, but I do like I do like social media when I get to see people and their families grow and great things, or they have a place to voice their sorrow when they've lost somebody. So when it comes to my music, I find value because I can share it. It's just one more outlet. If I can get somebody to, to listen to a song or a stream, um, there's no better forum to, to tell people about an award. Um, the fine line is how do you stay humble and tell everybody about it? Um, but I, I, without social media, there's no streams, you know? Uh, without social media, they don't know to go download the song or to buy into, if you will, the hype that you're trying to create about your project. So right. necessary evil. What would you like to say then to everyone who are fans and supporters of the incredible music you make? You know, it's it's almost hard. I'm not an emotional person, but it's almost hard not to get teary eyed when you look and go, wow, it's number one. And then when it happens again, I, what? These people took the time to either buy or listen and they didn't have to. So what what is it about my music that got me that privilege and the fact that people would take that time and you know messages and you know it's just overwhelming I, I hate the words thank you because it's so we're all callous to those two words but I don't know any other word than thank you 